Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Lord Jolly Gamer Show. This is episode 115. My name is Brandon. Oh, is that my cue? It I'm is. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve. <laughs> and we're professionals. And yeah. this, <laughs> this is the Lord Jolly Gamer Show. We talk about video games and video game news and stuff like that. We have been kind of behind because of uh, stuff. <laughs> so uh, we have a little bit to catch up on. I actually don't have a whole lot to talk about today. Um, you guys are probably going to be doing a lot of talking, but um, in, in case you didn't know, we start off our show with a trivia card. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, random cool. trivia card pack I got for Christmas last year. Uh, your, so your here's your two gotcha. trivia questions that we will be answering at the end of the show. So if you want to know the answers, you got to wait all the way to the end of the show. Uh, so the first question is after, today. and by the way, if I'm, if I'm doing repeats, please let me know. Cause I can't remember for the life of me if we did this one or not. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I'll know. Uh, first question actor, Bruce Willis provided his likeness and voice for which 1998 game. Second question. What is the name of the DJ in burnout paradise? Oh, pff, I don't, we will dance. give you, Hey, I knew, I knew the second one. Uh, actually, I think I knew both of these, uh, even if I didn't have See, so, I, so we're doing this remotely. We might, we, we want to, Oh yeah. Yeah. We should probably, know. yeah, we should probably also say that yeah. this is a so, virtual recording. Bruce um, just in case it sounds Willis. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we can totally <laughs> me, cheat now. Cause we're not in person. <laughs> excuse me while I look it up. Uh, but anyways, um, so I'd like to start off the show. Do you guys want to talk about the games we've been playing lately? Yes. Uh, yeah, but save me for last because we could probably segue into some news from mine. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, cool, yeah. Jacob, me and you can actually uh, commune on a couple of these. So mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about Fallout 76. Me too, first. sir. Okay. Uh, Fallout 76 came out, what, almost three years ago at this point? Yes. And uh, it came 18. out... It, it's it was kind of like a cyberpunk style launch where it, it was kind of like the fun thing to make fun of mm -hmm. and you know it kind of faded into obscurity and you know it was on sale we, we, we actually we saw it at e3 right we saw they had a trailer for some new stuff coming out in it and you know, i was i was interested i was like you know what i'll, I'll give it a shot i'll take a look mm -hmm. and um i bought it full price so <laughs> i did not i bought it for like i don't know like I did twelve dollars i bought I it i bought it full price too well, actually, I got, I got like, it as a Christmas gift, so did I didn't you? pay for it. Oh, okay. I got mine yeah, for like 12 it. bucks. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> so I, I was looking at it it, it. it went on sale for that low pretty yeah. frequently. And I was yes, like, you know is. what? The, the next time I see it for $12, I'm buying it. Because, you know, I liked Fallout 4. It was a decent game. And, mm -hmm. you know, Fallout 76 does have potential. And so I was like, you know what? Look, I, I would be willing to see how far this game has come and you know what i don't regret buying it because i'm actually having a really good time with this game. yeah man me too um three years of extra cooking time has has turned it around um where to begin so last time we talked about it before um, yeah our last episode we did yeah i have completed all of like the main story stuff um and i've hit level 50 i'm actually like level 65 or so and level 50 is kind of like your cap like that's like what puts you into the end game yeah, essentially you, you don't earn any more perks uh, or not perks you earn any perks more special cards points. you don't earn any more special points correct yeah you can still and all the guns max at 50 uh, right yeah and, and for the sake of um the length of the show we're gonna assume you kind of know a little bit about fallout and we we did talk about it before talking about the systems in it um but just a quick recap you level up, you get a special point, you can put it into strength, perception, endurance, uh, charisma, intelligence, agility, luck, all that stuff. And then the more of those you have, you can uh, pick a card, pick a perk card at the uh, at when you level up. And it could be something like um, you can carry more stuff or you can get a better price at a vendor or you can uh, get more um, damage when you use just pistols or when you use just rifles and so once you hit level 50 you don't get any more of those um and so that's kind of you still get to pick the card but you don't get to put any more points into it so you have 50 total that you can put in your special um 
uh, it's just called special <laughs> your special <laughs> uh attributes if you will um and then of course one of the cool things is you can um you can build up your camp you can collect all kinds of junk everything is made out of components just like in fallout 4 so you can you, know, you can collect wood so you can build wood structures steel so you can build, build metal structures all that stuff and different um you, know, you can power up your stuff with generators and put lights and all kinds of gizmos and gadgets and all that stuff um by the way jacob you're muted i don't know if you know or not <laughs> um yeah no i do sorry i'm i'm getting all our tabs for i'm listening to you while you oh, you're, you're, i'm you're, getting you're our good. tabs i, I didn't want to hear everybody to hear all the clickety clicks <laughs> oh no you're good <laughs> um i just wanted to make sure if i was uh, going on for too long uh but anyway um me and jacob have been kind of you know that's like our game when no one else is on we'll kind of hop in there we'll do events and stuff and uh, it's funny steve i think you might actually appreciate it it kind of has like this mmo flavor to it right yeah almost like this game as a service flavor where i mean it is a game as a service where you know it has a battle pass that you get for free and you can work through it and unlock new stuff for your character or you might get new resources or utilities um, or you cool. even get premium currency. Uh, you don't even have to pay for it. You just play the game. You get premium currency. Get it's not atoms. a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's not That's a lot. Cool. But yeah. you get like 150 every now and again. And you know, some of the more expensive stuff is about a thousand atoms. So, uh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say That's I, know, I said turtle it, alert. <laughs> I said it uh, on the last <laughs> cast, but that. no, uh, but it, I. If I was playing this game, like if me and you like were in a drought and nothing was going on, no GTA, no Red Dead, no no, no other games, and we were kind of like, like you said, in that almost MMO format, I might subscribe to the Fallout yeah, first yeah. because I, I that, think, it's, uh, it's a pretty good deal. It, it's a good value, right? So Fallout first is the subscription-based program you can sign up for. You can buy per month or you can buy the year at a discounted rate. Uh, and that's kind of their way of getting... Um, getting some money you know for because i mean it was a full price game but i think somewhere along the line they realized they gotta sell this for like mm -hmm. it's a live, bottom it's a live dollar game. They, like, they gotta sell this pretty low and they needed to make money off of microtransactions right and they got some pretty decent stuff you'd want to buy i mean there's nothing that, like i'm willing to shell out cash for in the store but the infinite the fallout, stash yeah is, the fallout mm. first program it gives you infinite uh weight capacity at your camps so you don't have to, you know, pick through the junk that you want and what you don't. I don't have that issue. Uh, apparently I you did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the issue with the capacity. Uh, also, you get some cool cosmetics. And then it just kind of gives you like a, an allowance per month of premium currency. Al right. Almost like, what, 1500 they said? Uh, 16 1600 which is yeah. more than enough to get some of the highest price things in the oh, store. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's per month. And it's and only like have... $12 a month, which is, you know, as no, much as I pay for the game. And it is a uh, access to a, your own private server. As oh, well. yeah. Access like, oh, to that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. At, at first, that I didn't realize, cool. I, was, I was like, why would you even want a private server other than not having to deal with people? Which the people in that in this people game are very helpful in this game. Very, very helpful. Very nice community. I have not had a single problem. I, no one has ever griefed me in this game. Wow. In fact, people have gone out of their way to help me in this game, which is... That's good. Like, Red phenomenal. Dead is a, is a decent community compared to GTA, which, well, anything's better than GTA. Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this is a step up above Red Dead, I would say. Like, I even run to an occasional griefer in Red Dead. I haven't, I'm, I'm like you, I haven't had one issue with people. Actually, people I'll go out of their way to come in and help yeah, you. Yeah, people go out of their way to give me stuff. Like, uh, I'll go do a daily op with see, someone, and they'll be like, hey, here's a bunch of plans I don't want. And it'll just wow. be stuff, like, just stuff for me to build. You see, that's a little unexpected for me because I always I always anticipated that game to be full of griefers because, you know, they mm -hmm. always had that, 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 um, the nuclear thing that they offered where you could go get the nuclear codes and and launch a nuclear practically nuke an area and it's funny because of how that works yeah and, they and advertise that and marketed that kind of wrong actually yeah I, I i completely understand how it works now because now that's the kind of the that's kind of the the, the thing i'm working on on my character because i'm doing post game stuff right um and basically you you get a nuke you get the nuclear codes and all that stuff and you launch the nukes to blast an area and you, pick, you could pick the area to grief people if you really wanted to, which yeah. honestly, it gives you a two minute timer to get out of there. So that's plenty enough time. Right. But honestly, it's all about collecting things that are exclusive in those those blast area zones. You're essentially and, creating an in-game dungeon. Yeah, you're creating um, everything you kill in that zone drops specific things you need to craft late game stuff with. 
and um, the all the vegetation and stuff that you would collect there normally turns into uh, nuked forms of those vegetations. So like, for example, I need fluorescent fluxes and to get fluorescent fluxes, you got to get fungus. And so if you nuke an area that has a lot of fungus in it, it turns into fluorescent fungus for me to collect. That's pretty cool. Um, so you kind of want to pick the different areas you want to nuke. Now, I haven't launched a nuke myself, but I typically just log in and someone's launching something somewhere. As if you really wanted to, going off. Yeah. yeah. If you really wanted to, you could probably communicate with people and be like, hey, could you help me launch these? And they would probably help you. That's I'm just cool. kind of too much of a introvert to do that. Yeah. Um, you could literally it's, camp it's out at system. Foundation and watch Cranberry Bog is there, get nuked is there... about every other <laughs> yeah, yeah, every, 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 every minute that place That's is getting funny. blown up. Is there any uh is there any text communication or is it strictly with voice? Uh, uh voice. Voice. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like, weird. You have like your your platform specific messaging right. like PlayStation yeah. and Xbox and uh but they also have emotes where you can yeah. and they're yeah, pretty yeah. helpful emotes. They're pretty specific too. Yeah. Like you can say like hey, can you pop a lunchbox which is like kind of your <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your little experience buff or you can say like hey, nice camp or hey, follow me or hey, I need your help or I do yeah, remember that. Helpful. I like the sound effects, yeah, that they come Yeah, the sound, very... sound effects are really good. <laughs> you, you know, honestly, after playing these like these um post-launch campaigns, they do a lot to like delve into Fallout universe lore. And oh. I'm really enjoying it. It's making me want to play Fallout yeah. 3 again. And I don't That's really cool. get cravings to play yeah. that game very often. Yeah, that uh, that Brotherhood of Steel mission that I got to jump in on you. Because I, I, I also noticed that's actually the cover art. Did you notice that? For, yeah, it is. Uh, the, yeah, the it tile is. where, uh, and I don't want to get too in depth, but it was a really interesting story arc that led to a huge, crazy boss battle. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that because. Bumped it, out. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, that's the style. I think it's because you weren't at that point in the story Probably. and I was. Probably. Uh, it, it's. Uh, that, We'll, we'll get to it in a second, but that's kind of the biggest con of playing this game is how buggy it is. Um, but the, another bad thing is like, depending on what you choose to do in the end, like you you kind of get like choices. Like, do you want to side with this person or that person? It really just ends up being what reward do you want? Because it's not going to change how you, how you see the world when you're done. Like it would in other games or like a single player game, you know, like if it's you know for example like dying like two is coming out later this year and like they're talking about how like your decisions will change the world itself it's nothing like that it's no, more right. like yeah. do you want to get this much gold and lose some reputation with these people like th these people are not going to remember the decisions you make like oh, right. they're, okay. they're just gonna you're gonna show back up and be like hey who do you want to run this place the lady or the dude and that's kind of it um so that's kind of a bummer but the stories are fun and it made mm -hmm. me it made me gen generally genuinely care about the decisions I was making, so that's cool. Um, now at this point that I'm at, um, yeah, you're a little ahead of me. I just yeah, hit fifty. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like, okay, you know, I kind of just need to log in every day and do some daily objectives and all that stuff, and it, it's gonna get to the point where it's gonna be a little too grindy for me. Yeah, I care. Um, so i noticed the scoreboard uh, the scoreboard is we should say is the battle pass uh every season right mm -hmm. and um i was just looking at it the other day and i know our schedules have not lined up with just work and crazy life but uh i find myself this is uh, like uh, wednesday was the first day where i actually did not daily log in and do any daily challenges to level up that battle pass yeah, and yeah. and i was looking at it and just looking at how much i have left to go and 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 the crazy thing is the experience increases to level up each little tier as you go higher just like yeah. you're leveling up a person and i'm looking i'm like i may not be like they're finishing long. this pass they're yeah. long man they're, there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot it's not like um uh, GTAs or uh, I'm not mm -hmm. GTA uh, Red Deads where Red it's like Deads. you can finish it. And, yeah, like, honestly, yeah. <laughs> the quick draw pass we're gonna talk about later. You can finish it in a day if you really wanted to. Right. Uh, no, this is like I don't know. I I didn't plan on getting to the end of this one. I want um, that robot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, we can try. I mean, they they uh, last a while. Yeah. <laughs> um. But we we can um, we can try. I, I just want to get um cool cosmetics and stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly. Uh, to kind of close up on it, I don't want to go too long because I could actually talk about this for a long time. Yeah. Um, but honestly, the just the genuine um, flow of the gameplay between me and Jacob just playing the game is fun. 
Like one time, me and Jacob were doing something. I'm like, "Hey, dude, look! This, these robots are fighting. What were they fighting? There, it's like these robots were fighting another faction of bad guys. And this one robot was like got his legs blown off, and he was crawling. <laughs> oh, it was the uh, we we came around the corner. He was crawling, and I, it was a protectotron. I was like, what is he? I didn't shoot him. I looked down. It was a mutant just wailing on him. He's like, I'm gonna get. You know, he's not saying it, but he's like crawling to this mutant because he's a robot, and that's all he knows how to do. We were, we ran into the super mutants that were fighting that um, uh, sheep squatch. Oh yeah, yeah, way yeah. Way up there. We're it's like, fun. Should we mess some with the, this thing. <laughs> yeah, some of the things are not not scripted and just kind of happen organically in the game are a lot right. of fun. And just yes. getting to share those experience with a friend. Um, and I think you know, gameplay wise, I mean, it's not the best feeling game you'll ever play in your life. No, but not at all. Um, it, it lends itself well to playing with friends with the special system and all that. Um, I've really been enjoying it. It's mm-hmm. just sometimes it'll bug out and. <laughs> uh that's that's the worst part man it's like having to re- re- restart the game several times or you know sometimes the building the camp won't agree with you uh right. quite the right way um or you know story stuff bugging out and having to redo parts of the story you decide um, to build your camp on a cliff and every time sometimes you respawn into the game and you you die because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're like, sick I, I built on I a cliff built, edge yeah i built my camp on one of the highest points in the entire game oh my sometimes gosh i log in and then my guy is just, <laughs> i'm like oh great and it kind of gives you a mulligan like it won't kill you like it yeah. won't cripple you or anything uh but you can just re-hit the fast travel thing and it'll, it'll typically put you in the spot you need to be in um but that and uh, now I understand why the private server thing would be good because of the workshop system. Because mm-hmm. I realize if you have a private server, you can own all the workshops at the same time and let them all Correct. run oh at the gosh. same time. It's like Scrooge McDuck with junk. Yeah, you would never need anything. <laughs> like you would. But th- at that point, it's like, what's the point of playing? Right, um, sure. But they do have some things lined up in the future. And also, one thing I want to say before we stop talking about it is, um, I appreciate, you know, comparing to games like rocket league and um other games as a service uh, G- gta online red dead online uh, they're they're frequently giving us things to look forward to as far as like their roadmaps right yes like they, they're, yeah. they're constantly posting things on their their blog about like what's going to be coming in the game and they're implementing it at a pretty rapid rate so if you do like playing this game you you have a lot to look forward to uh, I might not be the, the Cadillac of gaming, but uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes a Pontiac's just as good. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta sport <laughs> that Sunfire, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it, it works. And, it gets the job done. It's fun. And you know, um, whenever I, I, I start, I played it early on, and honestly, I always saw the potential there. It it always had the potential to be a good game, but you know, it's just yeah. The the biggest problem of most people when they played it is that they they were playing it like a traditional Fallout game. Fallout that's the game. Problem. Yeah. You don't need to play. You don't need to even think of it as a Fallout game. You just need to think of it as a an open world, an open world game in the Fallout universe. shooter game um, with friends. Pretty much, yeah. That's a game as a service, and like you don't need to be expecting. You know, at this point, you can expect decent stories, but you don't need to be expecting these grand, crazy yeah. stories and actions with repercussions and companions to follow you around on your adventure. Sometimes Sipples is good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's, it really is a fun game, and I can imagine it being even more fun if we had more people to play with. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's a game that, you know, now that I own it, I, I'll be happy to just kind of pop in when something new, you know, like, if I fall off of it, when, when and if I fall off of it, um, whenever the next thing drops, popping in, you know, checking out the new scoreboard, or um, and they do like events, like weekend events for like double score and uh, gold rushes and stuff like that. Um, maybe I'll go into depth, like like way in depth with it. But there's a ton of systems in play with this game. Oh yeah, um, different types of currencies and different incentives to do different things, like the events, doing events every day. What the difference between an event, uh, a daily quest, a daily and a daily op- yeah. operation is. Um, you have all these different things that you're incentivized to log in every day and do. there's plenty to do. Yeah. Um, but I never thought I was going to have as much fun with this game as I'm having. And it, it's, it really feels good actually. Good. To, I'm glad to, to hear that. Game. Uh, or like, you know, going and seeing Jacob, like, Hey, where'd, where'd you get this thing from? You know? Yeah. Right. How'd you build that thing? What, what are you wearing? You know, that, that's fun. Um, that's, that's really all I had to say about it. Uh, I'm trying to move kind of fast. I don't want to run out of time. Um, 
Can I talk about GTA and uh, Red Dead real quick? Yeah, yeah but get Red Dead, and then I'll, we'll let you talk about that because I don't really have much to say on that one. But I, I, I'd okay. like to a little slightly chime in on that. Uh, I just kind of gave up on those games. I mean, it's not like I don't want to play. I was them. too, I just, Steve. You know, it's not it's, 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 that. Well, that's not a bad decision because let me talk about it real quick. Yeah. Uh, so Rockstar has kind of started this um, trend where they'll update GTA and Red Dead like a week apart from each other. Um, which further proves that Red Dead Online is the redheaded stepchild in the family. Oh, yeah. In GTA Online is kind of like the golden boy. Understandably so. It's where their money comes from. I get it. Um, but Red Dead's uh, new DLC was called Blood Money, and it was like the the big new like finally we have a reason to be outlaws and be bad guys and do 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 hood rat things with our friends and smoke cigarettes down but break, <laughs> break break uh, uh break bottles down by the railroad tracks and smoke cigarettes <laughs> um and it kind of does it um uh, but to be honest the amount of content in this update is is pathetic it's really really pathetic and it's it's good stuff that they put in there there's just not a whole lot of it and they're drip feeding it right so Basically, they made it to where all the bad guy mission givers in Free Roam, uh, you, they give like bad guy specific missions for you to do. And there's this one word, and I'm just going to call it, I'm going to abbreviate it because I hate saying it. Uh, oh. It's Capitale, Capitale, mm-hmm. which is like the currency. You can hold 50, and we're going to call them caps. caps. You can hold yeah. 50 caps at a time, and you use those caps to launch opportunities, which are basically like your big boy missions, right? Your actual like your heists. I wouldn't even go that far. It oh, is really? like a, it's like a kind of like the story mode missions that we have gotten, but it's just based around doing hood rat things, bad guy things, robbing people and robbing trains and stuff like that. But it's not nearly on the level as the heists and yeah. nearly as involved. And, um, you know, like Steven's going to be the, the safe cracker. Jacob's going to hijack the train. Brandon's going to be on horseback. No, it's not like that. It's just, Here's your objective. Your objective is to steal this object. And they do give you a little freedom with the mission. Like you can stealth them and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's the same mission over and over again. Um, and it's just the shame what it could. Yeah, it's a shame. It, 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 they should have done heists at this point. Mm-hmm. Like they should have made multi-part set up, you know, big paying out missions and tons of new things to to buy with it because they put literally no new content that you can purchase with your money uh that you're getting from these missions no new clothing no new guns no new mounts no nothing all the new stuff is locked behind the quick draw pass which is like the outlaw pass but it's only 25 tiers instead of 80 to 100 tiers and you know you pay your gold which is your premium currency you get it all back by the time you finish the pass but it's only 25 tiers and you can finish that in a day in one sit down if you really wanted to that's gross which is i mean they got some there's really good stuff in the pass like there's really nice stuff in the pass but i want to pass as a progression and a reason to come back to your game that's the point the the, 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 a a battle pass is a carrot on a stick for life sources that's where we are that's another thing is that they they didn't even put in a progression system with this like outlaw being like all right so you know we got right and bounty hunter and naturalist naturalist and collector and all that and there was these really great incentives Mm -hmm. to progress oh the roles were so good in that game yeah they were so like they didn't even make this a role they just made it a thing to do and like it's not locked behind any paywalls or anything you can jump in like if you pick this game up you can start playing this outlaw stuff immediately with no no paywall but it's really just more missions and it's not even like the best payout ever you can just you could probably make more doing the things that already exist and so like it's fun playing it with your friends but then if you've already done everything there is to do in the game like we have then it's like okay well now what and it just it's a shame because it's a really great open world uh with all kinds of you know possibility oh, yes. and great customization in your characters and you know so many things to you know that you could have you know expanded on and they didn't and GTA comes out and then they have their tuners update and it's it's a, it's a great update <laughs> uh, for the most part it's not the best but it's great um, so I'll get into that so yeah Red Dead Red Dead Blood Money it's just a shame it's, um, it's a shame because I've been on the other end of the spectrum I've been like here's another uh, hey Jacob here's another GTA uh, event I don't care let's what's going on Red Dead oh it's a new role okay cool yeah but this it's it, this the, the tone has switched. Uh, 
because I'm actually kind of enjoying what you're about to talk about. Yeah, and, and yeah. at this point, at, at this point, they're um, they're drip feeding some of the stuff still in in Red Dead, and they're drip feeding the opportunity missions, which you need the, the caps for. Um, and I'm just gonna wait until they're all released. Me and somebody sure. else, maybe you, or if you if you install it, or, or Seth, you know, Seth's yeah. been playing with me. We're probably just gonna run them all in one one fell swoop and just check them all out, and then. I mean, I'll probably return and do the quick draw passes every now and again. But other than that, I just yeah, it, it's I'm more incentivized yeah. to play GTA at this point. It's and always yep. go ahead. It's always been like a big disappointment to me, Red Dead Online. I mean, I just it just it, it seems like whenever they have something that I'm interested in, I always you know I had connection issues, but it's like now it's like even if I do get on there, it's like what do I do? You know, it's just I, yeah. I just don't like. I, I just don't, I don't care for it. I guess I guess if they put as much effort into GTA Online as they did, uh, as you know, I wish they put as much effort into this as they did GTA Online, and then it would be interesting to me because you know, like I love the team aspects of GTA Online. I love the heists. I love you know. I even like doing some of the missions, some of the like the uh, the um, uh, CEO jobs and stuff like that. That's all fun. But like, I don't know, man. Just right there was just. It was kind of bland to me. It just seemed like you had this open oh, world. Oh yeah, in the where beginning, really definitely. Yeah. In the beginning, yeah. there was almost nothing to do. You had the camp system. There was no reason to even have a camp. Exactly. I'm telling you, the 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 roles are the saving grace of that game, in my opinion. And I treat the roles almost like like if, if you want to look at Red Dead as an MMO, it's not. But if you did, like roles are classes at the end of the day. And like think about you know I want to go level up a rogue. I want to level up a wizard. I want to yeah. level up this. And it's the same even... thing in a in a Western setting, and it's just got yeah. a different name. I just and don't know what they're thinking. Cause like they no, did the either. the outlaw, uh, not the outlaw, the uh, the bounty hunter expansion, like the yeah, and update they added to it, right? That's right. Adding ten more ranks to that role, like why don't you just do that for all of them? That's exactly. That's, that's an easy. That's easy content. Oh, I love moonshine. It's my favorite thing. It, I don't. It's it's just a shame, man. It is. Yeah. It is really a shame. Um, but anyway, so GTA. <laughs> what's not? A, yeah. What's not a shame? <laughs> what's not a shame is GTA had their new update, which is something that. Uh, I've been clamoring for and it's funny because it's almost like they stole my ideas <laughs> literally uh, so it's called GTA tuners it's all about tuner type vehicles which is like my favorite kind yeah same. and we've talked about it before we just want a place to you know share our car creations with each other and um, have cars with you know tons of customization options instead of having you know, a supercar that you can just change a couple things on that costs three million dollars. We'd rather spend that three million dollars adjusting a million different things than just a couple things, right? right. Uh, gone are the days of GTA where you just want the next fastest, best car ever. No one really wants that anymore. Like, people kind of want what Red Dead was doing, where it's a less, um, it's a more concentrated experience, less watered down, right? So, like. The bad thing with GTA was like you have this big map and things are so far from each other and you have all these cool cars and you're driving you're driving tons of distance to go do these different things and whereas Red Dead's more quick and, and uh, frenetic you know mm -hmm. uh, at least it was um, and now it's like uh, you have everything's kind of close up to each other it's all kind of based in the city uh, and they kind of heard that you know what everyone was clamoring for it's like I'm tired of driving to Polito just to go do one thing. Um, but they have this new social space called the, the Los Santos Car Meet. It's this like underground in a place where everybody's garage. got their parking little, garage. Yeah, in this parking garage, they got low riders bouncing, supercars revving their engines. Music's just, playing in the background, techno like music. This, yeah, this really cool Ooh. place. You can hang out and, with your friends and show off your cars. And, you know, if you're into public, like, like public servers, you know, showing off all your stuff to all the different people. It's a griefer free place. You can rent yep. the place out once you get to a certain level and you can have private car meets with your friends. Totally cool, right? Um, test tracks. They got a test track. They put the new vehicles um, every week. They rotate out three new vehicles from the expansion that you can go test drive before you buy them. So if you, you, you know, you can find out that a car has an e-brake that's not quite as good as you hoped it was. So, you know, you're not going to buy it anymore. Uh, now all of this is is great, but um, it's not without a little bit of ickiness with the rep system. Yeah, uh, there is a reputation system that locks certain paint jobs and certain mods to cars and prices. All the, all the new, yeah, uh, trade prices. 
and the new uh, cosmetic uh, clothing items are all locked behind the reputation system. It's it's That's not as bad to unlock it because a lot of times the earning the rep is just showing up at the meet, just going to buy yeah. a piece of clothes, a piece of, a piece of, a piece a piece of, clothes, of clothing, piece of clothing. <laughs> piece of clothing. Uh, but it's a very simple task, but it's just as the carrot on stick thing where you have to and log the in the longer daily. it goes on, the more it takes to get a level up. Yep. Uh, I've been logging in every day, just doing the basic daily things you can do. If you have friends, you can do it kind of yeah. faster by doing races and, and test I'm, tracks. I just hit level and... 30 today, so that's yeah, not 16. too bad. But no. i got to be like level 120-something to get the one paint job, the one for my favorite car from the other page, which is poo poo um, I don't you like seen that, that new Dominator? Oh, that Mustang. <clears throat> yeah, and the, and the cars they added are just the cars that <clears throat> everybody's been wearing, <clears throat> right? So RX-7, uh, 1969 Supra. Mustang. Um, the old school Supra was in there, uh, but now they got the new Supra. Yeah, that's, that's um, right. Yeah. They put the like early 2000s Mustang. Just all kinds of cars people have been wanting, man, for, for years. They finally put it all in. And there is a new business you can buy. Yeah, that's right. The, the auto, auto shop. shop. You get the auto shop, and it unlocks um, these new contracts you can do, which are little mini heists, basically. Two they don't preps follow, and, a, and a heist. Yeah, two mm-hmm. preps that you can do in free mode that take no time at all. And, I mean, they don't pay out as much as heists, and they're not nearly as in-depth as heists. And they don't even work on the same system as heists, right? So, like, if someone dies, you can actually still finish the mission, and everybody still gets paid. Um, it's not the most um, profitable thing in the world, but you know, if, if you haven't played GTA Online at this point, this is like one of the things you should probably start with because it's, very it's totally doable level. solo. You can do it with friends; it takes no time at all, and I mean, you can you can make some decent profit off of it. And the, um, they have a little mini game in the um, the fact that people will bring in cars to have them. Yeah. You have you mod them for them, and you turn around and sell them to them. Yeah, so you get this cool like little um, mini game, uh, like the legitimate business side of the auto shop. People dropping off their cars, and you you soup them up to their specifications, and you can take a chance and put other things on it and see if they'll pay out more. Uh, and it's fun. I mean, it's 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 fair. Um, you know. It's kind of like a little mini version of the, you know, us selling cars like we used to do, but there's no risk as far right. as like people, like you can actually do it successfully without hitting anything um, if you're playing in a private server. Uh, because once again, GTA Online's public uh, player base is the most toxic thing on the planet Earth. Yeah. Um, but no, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying mm-hmm. it. It's got me a little bit back into it. I mean, it's not going to keep me there forever, but it's been fun to actually, you know, play and, and soup up cars. I've been wanting for a really long time. Um, I think this is the first time, unless I, unless I did some stuff with the bunker stuff. This is the first time that I've actually, uh, since the car sourcing that I would log, I'll log in a GTA when you guys aren't online. Like I'll, I'll get on myself and do it. Yeah. I used to, I used to only get on GTA if everybody's getting on GTA and we had stuff to sell. But this, I'm finding myself hopping on. Like, Let me hop on and do do the car meet, like you said, and get some rep in. Yeah, and I'll tell you what else that shop. helps is that now we all have. Well, sorry, Steve. We all have PS5s and, and GTA <laughs> 5 loads like in two seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, <I laughs> which is y'all. pretty great. <laughs> I hate you. I hate they, they're they're out there. You, it's achievable. You can get one. Uh, d- I, d- you know, there's money. Money's an issue right now. And you just kind of, yeah. If, if you want one, you can try. I, I'm content. I'm content with the PC right now. Um, it'll happen eventually. I just, I don't see a need for it right now because most of the time when I'm playing with you guys, uh, whatever I'm gonna play. If I'm gonna play on a PlayStation with y'all, I could just use my PlayStation 4. That's it's gonna fair. suck. It's gonna suck, but it, it is what it is. And then most of the time when we do play stuff, it's usually Smash anyway. I say mean, your PlayStation right. 4 is just a, a vessel to talk to us. To <laughs> Pretty Smash. much, yeah. But all, but here's some bad news though. Well, good news for us uh, is that you know the oh, expanded yeah. and enhanced version of GTA Online, oh, and whatever that is gonna bring with it, because that that seems to be a big mystery. That's going to be in November, and I'm really interested to see because they've kind of hinted at some of the things that they're going to be doing with that. There's a lot of rumors going around, and we don't know if that's going to launch with a DLC attached to it either. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what that, uh, that that's something to look forward to. Um, sure. But it's, it's good to see um, a, a decent update with GTA because most yes. of the time it's like, you, it's like okay, here's a poo-poo business to do, and here's uh, yeah, you, you got to let it bake really and in. go do stuff. Yeah, and so the thing about GTA that it, it does better than uh, Red Dead Online is that it, it the loop, the loop is is more enjoyable, right? You have things, you're constantly having things you want to put spend your money on, and 
you have plenty of things to earn that money with you know at this point you know we're almost like what 10 years into this game so like there's like a million different ways to make money in that game and with friends now it's almost like they listen and they know that they don't want to they don't they don't force anyone to go into public stuff anymore that's Um, good that's what they were doing for a while yeah all the gun running and the airplane stuff and the ceo stuff that was all all public server and now you can do things privately with your friends it's like i'm glad they changed that yeah, if the, if the like the like the like, little car mini game we talked about, like if they'd have made that to okay, you gotta go find a, a public server and go run and sell your car. I'm like, uh, I mean, not that the money is great for that. It's just like that was definitely a selling point. Is that everything can be done on an invite only? Yeah, I mean, it, it would be one thing if they incentivize you to do it. Like, yeah, you can do it on private servers, but if you do it on public with the extra risk, you know, there's more reward, which I'd be fine with. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But the thing is, is that um, you know. Grand Theft Auto is just such a, a Grand Theft Auto Online is such a toxic cesspool. Of <laughs> it really is the yeah, worst is. human beings on earth. Like it really, honestly, they really need to be doing some experiments. Like they need to do some scientific studies to see what would happen if we removed all laws. Uh, and George, it seems like ninety eight percent of our player base are psychopaths. <laughs> Because, I mean, they could really get some insight on human nature. Like, if we had a purge type deal, that is what would happen. Grand Theft Auto Online is basically the purge. I mean, it's a freaking civil war zone in the middle of there. People are armed to the teeth, and it's just like, hey, I like that guy. Bah! You know? As, as, so, silly as, that, as silly as that free guy movie looks, that's kind of why I'm excited for it. Because this is it's <laughs> literally a, a satire of this game. Uh, Pretty much. But, but quick thing. Uh, also, uh, they added some new types of races. They added street races, pursuit races, sprint races, and... Pursuit- the, and the um they added the um the prize ride challenge where you can Ooh, actually get the cars for free and Ooh. you can almost cheese it and get every car for free if, if you're logging in every week so um i neat. mean but it just depends on if you want the car or not because right now the, the free the free car yeah, you can exactly. actually get it if you if you cheese it you can actually get it for free in one day but it is kind of a poo poo car i don't want it it's that truck that <laughs> seth bought unfortunately sorry seth. <laughs> um but yeah, and the pursuit races are, are probably the, the. I've never wanted to like actually do races more. Um, yeah, the cops are involved. Yeah, because the, the cops, you can choose how how many stars, how high the traffic is, and there's no there's no guidance on your map. It just shows you the checkpoints and you gotta get to them. And there's cops everywhere with roadblocks and everything. Um, so we can actually race with our custom cars and it actually be fair. So right. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. The only bad thing is you can only use the cars from the update. So that's kind of yeah. Fun. Hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah, GTA Tuners, um, good update. Not the best, but good. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least got me back in Los Santos. Yeah, for a while. same. And that's all I really had to talk about. Um, Jacob, you do you have anything else? Yeah, I have uh, two quick games. Uh, did I talk about Scarlet Nexus on the last episode? I don't remember. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> it's, been, it's actually been almost a month, so I don't know. Okay, probably mm-hmm. not. I have two two quick games. One, I, one I'm actually really enjoying, and one I'm right about actually uh and then i guess we can segue to steve um scarlet nexus scarlet nexus came out by by uh bandai namco it is an anime as anime game can get uh oh, it's a weed game yeah buddy and i love it <laughs> persona has ruined me uh no let me let me uh, <laughs> ruined me ruined me, ruined me. i've been uh, ruined it's not uh, let me say this it's not genshin impact uh cringe anime it's not too bad uh, it, but it is anime, you know, AF. It's it's um, so the the uh, the world. Well, let me say let me say this. The, the game plays like a, a little bit of sprinkle, a little bit of control into it with uh, the telekinesis of grabbing stuff just randomly out of the environment, uh, and it's kind of got that almost yakuza where it's, it, you can grab anything in the world and start fighting with it, but you're doing it with your mind, not that you're actually just grabbing it like Kazuya and throwing it. <laughs> like you're not you're not grabbing a dirt bike with your hand and hitting somebody with it, but. Um, and then it's you mean got- you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't play that game. That's, I'm getting uh, my, my, my Japanese speaking protagonist characters uh, confused. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but um and it's got a, like a melee system. So it's so this there's this future war. Uh, the it's very like the government is ran uh, like kind of like a militarized state and they everybody has these certain special powers you're born with uh, only a few people don't have the ability to have these powers they're actually called duds I found out later in the gameplay that's just a really terrible term um, 
and you're either you're either you go into the military which is the osf or you are drafted by them because you're like super awesome at your powers and we're talking like powers like one person in my group can do fire one person can teleport you know generic video game stuff uh the main two characters there's a female and male version and they both have two storylines so it incentivizes you to play both because and both jacob are... is the female no uh, no oh. i actually played as oh. Uto as the oh. male because i liked his story arc better well uh, color and, me uh, surprised but it seems pretty interesting because they both weave in and out of each other. And um, so if like right now, the, the male character, Yuito, is actually trying to track Kasane, who is the, f the female protagonist, if you would have played her, uh, because we're having these issues where uh, we're being overworked by our brains because everything, that, so let me say that your character is like what we call uh, psychokinesis, but basically telekinesis is your power. Uh, and uh, like time is skipping, like they're having like amnesia, like they're blacking out and then popping back in, like, you know, where'd you go? You kind of blacked out and, and like time has passed. Well, apparently Kasane, it's just doing this anime weird, crazy going on tangent, Kasane's killed your dad. But the story between the two the two playable protagonists is interweaving, which is really neat, which incentivizes you to go back and play the other one to see what's going on with her. Um, but the combat is just what's really fun because, so you, you have a melee attack, both characters do, uh, and you build up the the ability to use the telekinesis by doing melee. So it's this really cool ebb and flow of let me run in, get my hits, and it does like the Devil May Cry jump. Yeah, thing. I'm looking at some gameplay of it, and like the guy's kind of like dodging and slashing and stuff, and then he did like this big telekinetic attack, and he like scooped up all these iron girders that was laying around this like right. subway looking area, and they just What's did this huge again? tornado. Uh, Scarlet Nexus. Yeah, and, and so like you spin, it takes takes energy to spin that telekinesis. So you need to incentivize you after you throw the the, the stuff around, you want to jump back in um, and start meleeing. Yeah, that was really cool. So there's, it, looks so there's, like, it, they have like a, it looks like a stagger meter kind of. Yes, there's a, there's what they call it a brain crush, but there's a there's a stagger meter. So and when you brain crush them uh, and certain things, just like any generic video game RPG, when you crush that, that, that some things are weaker to other stuff so that you can it, it breaks that stagger bar quicker like there's these things called pods that uh, are like flammable so if you want to use your your pyrokinesis characters uh, you want to share her power your sword becomes inflamed and so you can light them on fire and it brings them down breaks that stagger bar down quicker and when it does that there's a quick prompt called a brain crush and you hit L, uh, L2 on the uh, triggers and it does this really cool animation where you like uh, like one time you, he throws a sword down stabs it in the ground and like you basically when you telekinesis pull the thing's head apart uh i like to say that these these things you're fighting are others and they're kind of weird they're these weird yeah they look, look those bad guys look kind of like bizarre like they're kind of scary because uh -huh. they're so bizarre looking yeah like one's like this it's like a bouquet legs. of rose yeah, roses right. with legs right and they, they really haven't gotten too in depth into what the others are um but uh yeah that combat is just what makes it really cool uh yeah there's there's a and it does uh use the adaptive triggers brandon so like uh, when you're throwing the telekinesis with the right trigger, there's a there's a pull to your trigger, and like as you're pulling it down, oh, like nice. the harder you throw it, the harder you pull on the trigger. Um, and then like like that one with the girders, there's special prompts which are the L2s. The the regular prompts are, are R2. The L2s are like that thing with the girders, or like you might uh, pull down a telephone pole because it's like a stronger attack, and it'll have these little mini thing mini prompts where like, hey, swipe to the left real quick, and you need to swipe the, 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 the telephone pole across them like a baseball bat. So it it does a, the combat's what's very engaging. The story, like I said, is just a, just an <laughs> anime, anime story. A anime bull crap. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but that's uh, all yeah. I say. <laughs> that's, uh, but I, I, I find myself every night like, I want to let me let me find some more about this and wreck some stuff. So uh, Scarlet Nexus is a really fun game, uh, and it's got that really cool thing that's that's a Jacob thing, which is that that cool techno kind of special powers uh, future setting that I really really like. Yeah, so. it looks cool. I saw some gameplay and like walking around, kind of like a looks like Tokyo kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's got that that shell uh, uh, excuse me cell shaded kind of animation, uh, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Nice. Um, the game, and I'll finish with this one. And I'm not enjoying. I got a little too impulsive. Uh oh. Tribes uh -oh. of Midgar. That, oh no. I jumped on it, uh, and I didn't do the research like I should have. So oh, the no. game, the game tells you that it's a survival action RPG, and that's that's half right. The other half of that is that it's technically a, uh, a tower defense. In that you have, uh, is it Urgisil? Urgisil? 
is the tree alive? Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil is in the center of your village. So I was thinking it was going to be more along the lines of kind of a Valheim knockoff in that I could build anywhere. Uh, I could, we, we could create camps, but it was all more of this drop down kind of Diablo style. Oh. Um, and it's not. The village is essentially you just, you, you want to spend resources. So here's the problem with this game. The problem with this game is you have things called souls. Uh, everything gives you souls. Whether you're killing a guy, you're pulling a resource, you're upgrading something, it's souls, 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 it's giving you souls. But Idrisil requires souls. Uh, and every night, just like a generic, like Minecraft, bad guys come and try to attack Idrisil and you need to defend it. The, the, the nighttime is not very long, so it's, a not, it's not too long of a wave defense. But of course they can damage Idrisil. But then during the day, Idrisil ticks down souls. So you're constantly having to feed souls. But then the other problem with that is to upgrade your camp, to build another piece of your base, to upgrade your vendors or your NPCs in your camp, all require souls. And guess what? If you die, you lose all of them. Oh. And so it's this weird time crunch of everybody run away from the camp, everybody grab as much stuff, kill as much stuff. Oh, I died. Well, let me go do it again. But every, so I'm, I'm actually doing research. A lot of people are having fun with the co-op, and I did some matchmaking. Uh, but the solo play is not almost non-playable right now. I got to day five on my own uh and it was hard as heck uh i it's like like the the, the same amount of requirement of, for souls is in a co-op game of 10 people is the same required for a solo match so imagine trying to do the work of 10 people by yourself um oh, man i remember seeing this at e3 this year and kind of being excited for it but the more i saw i'm looking at gameplay right now and i I'm not saying it looks bad. Uh, it does not look like it's for me. <laughs> no, yeah. well, it, see, and so here's the thing too that that was one of the things that jumped into it. I didn't know it had classes, so there's eight classes. Right? See, that's the thing. That's the thing that made me interested in it. Was exactly the class system. So yeah, but they only give you a warrior or a ranger. Well, here's the problem. Uh, it's a, now let me say this: it's a gearbox game. Okay, um, Risk of Rain two was made by Gearbox, and Risk of Rain did the same thing in that the more you played that uh, that roguelite. It would you would do in certain challenges you would unlock certain new classes. This does the same thing, but like for example, let me explain something. So like uh, one of the classes I want to get, which is more like the tame class, where you want to taunt the things that have them on you. Oh, and I'm you, looking at it right now. You need to kill three Jotuns. Yeah, I, I was see, doing. I see one ahead. that says like uh, block 25 attacks in 10 seconds in a world. Right. Survive beyond day 15 in a world. Right. Uh, and these are all for different like specific challenges per. So if yes. you want to be a guardian, you have to defeat three Jotnar uh, Jotnar in in a world. So here's the problem. I've been, I, I've did some matchmaking matches, and I we got to like day seven, and I looked at the clock. I had spent an hour in there. We killed oh, one. Man. And you get and you got to get killed to one Jotun. We killed one Jotun. I did some research. People were talking about they didn't even get the purple and, and gold tier because they, they couldn't find the resources and would spend. And we're talking about 10 people coordinated together all talking as a team. And they actually beat the saga. So that technically they beat the what will be the story mission. But they only got to day 13 and they only killed two two Jotuns. And that took an hour and a half of gameplay. Oh, my goodness. So oh, see, that's uh... just for someone like me, that's not doable for. No, not at all. Like. Uh... I mean, so the, I guess it's a one and done though, because once you once you do it, you get the you get the class. So, I mean, if you set a, a set the time. Yeah, yeah. Once you've course. achieved that challenge, right? It's yours. But so the, 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 let me not completely poo poo on tribes. From what I understand, the devs are listening, and they know that the state that it's in is kind of broken and very very difficult. So they know they set the bar a little too high. So they're listening, and they're kind of they said they're working on it. And number two, the game was twenty bucks. Yeah, they, they, they have plenty of room to fine-tune it. And people have done that before. Like when Mortal Kombat 11 came out, the towers were poo-poo hard, and they had to, they had to fix them. Right, um, right, right. That's right. Almost right. even before the game came out. So there's room to work. And I, like I said, I only spent 20 bucks. And I've, I mean, <laughs> I've played three nights in a row, and I've played some pretty long sessions. So I feel like I'm starting to get my money's worth. But it's just kind of one of those things like, oh, I was impulsive. I should have waited. I should have did some research. Definitely doesn't look like Valheim. No. <laughs> no. That game's great. Uh, yes, it is. So I think, I, uh, I think a lot of the reason behind people flock into it, and especially in Jacob's, poor Jacob's case, um, is that a lot of people have that hankering for more Valheim content? Yeah, and we're just kind of waiting on that. Yeah, um, that's the bad thing about my it wife being such a in. small team. 
Yeah. And so I think a lot of people just want to scratch that itch, you know, yep, and poor exactly. Jacob, poor Jacob's like, I didn't get to play it with you guys. So That's playing. exactly right. Man. I was like, this is my chance. This is it. This is it. This is it. I just get this game. I tell everybody how good it is and everybody can play it. And it's just like, nope. And I, and I even Seth, because Seth is a really big fan of the Viking lore. And so he's been like, he's like, man, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on it. And like, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Maybe we can try it. And I've been doing some matchmaking. And I even told him last night, I was like, dude, don't get this game. Don't get it. <laughs> as much as I want to play with friends, just don't. It's just, I'm, this is kind of miserable. Man, that's kind of a bummer to hear. Sorry to hear that, Jacob. Yeah, like Sorry I said, it was 20 hear. bucks. I mean, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, at least it was only twenty bucks. But still, though, like I really, I really want you to experience Valheim with us. And I was kind of low key hoping I know. that this one was going to pan out because I'd have got it too. You know, uh, I know I don't really, I know I haven't really been playing PlayStation with you guys. But I mean, like I'd have taken some time to, to sure on that with you guys. It would have been good. But you know, I'm, I, I, a part of me is glad though because now I get to save my money. Well, oh, you know, let me let me say this though. You know what 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 game is not disappointing, Steve? What game is not disappointing? Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, oh that's is a that great, my segue? That's a great segue, Jacob. Is I was going to say, segue? hey, guys. I'm touching my nipples hell, right now. <laughs> hell has frozen <laughs> over because Steve, Steve, tell us about the disgraceful, the, the, the fall from grace with with you and World of Warcraft and and, and turning the other cheek to Final Fantasy XIV. So, What's going on, Steve? It's so ironic, guys, because, I mean, it's like there's really no other better. There, there is no better way to describe exactly what's happening than to use a direct quote from World of Warcraft. No king rules forever. I mean, it's just it's you always hear that what goes up must come down. And so you always get that. You always get that idea like, you know, I better enjoy this while I can. But you see, like with WoW, it felt like for so long, nothing was going to stop it. I mean, there were so many MMOs that tried and failed. I mean, you're talking, you know, Star Wars Old Republic. Um, you know, everybody was talking about how that was going to be the wild killer. And the Wild Star, that was going to be the wild killer. And Guild Wars. And, and even Final Fantasy XIV was touted as the wild, wild killer. And it seemed to me, I, you know, it just wasn't happening. And nobody just, came close. Nobody came close. The funny thing is, or the sad thing, I should say, is that it... It was themselves. They themselves that did it. Now, um, how should I do this? Should I like start off talking about Final Fantasy XIV, or should I just go on on my tangent about WoW? Because y'all know it's coming. Uh, let's talk about Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Uh, okay. Because so, you guys can kind of go back and forth. I mean, I played it a little bit, and of course, I'm kind of like the Final Fantasy dude. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about. I mean, we. You're gonna tell us why you switched to Final Fantasy. Yeah, 15. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell but, that after. I'm, I'm gonna, really gonna talk about. Yeah, for the for the sake yeah. of time, you don't have to explain the systems of it. Tell us why, what you're enjoying about it in comparison to World of Warcraft. Probably every aspect of it. If I'm being totally honest, I mean, it's just it is a game that is that's, catered. That's, that's deep. That's that it deep. is. The, I'm telling you though, but but I mean, there, uh, right now there's a whole lot of stuff that like. I don't really think I could find anything that WoW does better anymore. I, I, I'll be completely honest with you. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just everything is so smooth. It's so streamlined. It's like the developers, uh, like Square Enix and Yoshi's team. I don't I don't know his full name. I'm gonna call him Yoshi. It's like the director of Final Fantasy XIV. It's like they listen to the player base, and they are constantly finding ways to cater to the players and it's like they know what everybody wants i mean the story so the story i have not gotten that far i just oh, got by the way it, it's a uh, naoki yoshida is that right naoki yoshida thank you man. naoki yoshida um the story everybody so what everybody says about the story is right i just got into heaven's words content okay a realm reborn the story it's it's long and it's bland and it drags on but I got to tell you, your patience will be very much rewarded because I sat through that entire cutscene. It's probably, like Jacob said, 45 minutes worth of cutscenes at the end of um, A Realm Reborn going into Heaven's Sword. That was some peak. I'm talking like Game of Thrones season three level writing. That stuff was amazing. It, was, it, it went from zero to 10,000 in a second. I mean, it's like... 
I didn't know what was going on, and now I'm like fully aware of everything that's going on. I'm fully invested. That's how that's how good it was. So if anybody's listening and anybody's on the fence, I I, I gotta tell you, be patient. Dr- like push through, push through the slug. It's gonna be sluggish. I'm telling you. Would you say it's pretty common for MMOs though, for like the base game part of it yeah, to be kind yeah. of the slowest part? Yeah. I mean, that that was their there was their launch, and they had to have something big. Exactly. And and, and honestly. With. World of Warcraft did not have much of a story in Classic or Burning Crusade. Like, they, there was a story, but it wasn't like, it's still more in-depth than, uh, Final Fantasy is still more in-depth than that, you know, and, and with even with all the complaints. And then it's just, okay, let's see, story, gameplay. I love the gameplay of this game. This game, it, and Brandon, you and I were talking right before we started. The thing that I really like about this game is that there's no need for any third-party software at all. It's banned. I, I, I'm pretty sure because the game doesn't need to be exactly. You don't. You don't. You don't need patches to make the game feasible. You don't need any add-ons. I, I like. Okay, I don't know if they're banned. Y'all have to forgive me. I'm still a bit of a Final Fantasy 14 noob, but I watched uh, Yoshida give an interview um, where he kind of said was talking about how oh well third party, you know that's technically not allowed. So I assume I take that to mean that you know there is no add-ons. I can't even find any add-ons if I want to, except for one for bards. Um, but but I mean I don't need them. I don't need them. The only thing the, that I'm missing the interface is extremely customized. Oh my god, extremely customizable in game. It's so good. You don't even have you don't have to add anything. You don't have to get a certain UI. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Like everybody on WoW, the first thing they <coughs> tell you if they see you playing WoW, they're gonna complain. They're gonna be like, "Why are you using the base UI? Why aren't you using Elf UI or something something else or Tuki UI? You know, why aren't you using a custom UI? You don't need to do that for Final Fantasy XI. It's perfect. It's completely customizable. <laughs> uh, what did I say? Eleven. <laughs> All right, that's, that's that's the other MMO. I'm talking about fourteen. You, you could literally move anything. Any any I Icon, your action bars, everything could be moved. You can However, resize we, them. Um, it could be resized. But my favorite thing about the gameplay, Brandon, believe it or not, is the job system. It's the way that the Dude, jobs work. I, I yeah. literally just pulled up a list. Can't, let me say this real quick. You've got you know your tanks, healers, and DPS, right? But listen mm-hmm. to this list: Paladin, yep. Warrior, Dark Knight, Gunbreaker, White Mage, Scholar, Astrologian. Yep. Uh, monk, Dragoon, Ninja, Samurai, Bard, Machinist, Dancer, Black Mage, Summoner, Red Mage, and Blue Mage. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's so that's many classes. So many. Yeah. And these, these, for someone like me, I, I like, I, I get these giddy little moments when I see you guys talking about this stuff. Like Steve was talking to me about a Bard earlier, and someone who has played all the old Final Fantasy games and has such a love for that. Seeing you guys talk about these instead of like World of Warcraft stuff. Oh man, it makes me so happy. Right. <laughs> it it, it uh, brightens your soul. But but here's the coolest thing about the job system, okay? I didn't realize this at first, but you could literally change your job based on the weapon you have equipped. Like, yep. Like, let me tell you, like, I leveled up a Lancer, got the Dragoon Soul Stone, and then as soon as I hit 50, I tried out Samurai, fell in love with Samurai. You know how I switched from Samurai to, um, from Dragoon to Samurai and back and forth? Put a new weapon in there. Yep. I put my lancer. I'm a dragoon. Put my katana. Samurai. Put my so great you don't sword, have to make an alternate Knight. character every time you want to make nope. a new class. Nope. And the, and the really cool thing is that it saves your outfits. So you, yep. you you go to the top, and it even streamlines and says you click on a button and go. It'll tell you uh, what's the best in slot for me for everything, and it'll tell you. Yeah, we recommend these yep. things, and you click yep. on it, and then you save it. It's like okay, Sam level 150. Uh, samurai level 150, and you could switch the red mage, put the red mage clothes on, like Steve said, and then switch right Yo, back. Man, literally, red red I didn't even know that. So now, when we red get off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Son. But dude, red mages, I, red mages are pretty cool. I haven't tried them out yet, but I love the fact that they are like physical DPS and Super magic involved. DPS. Like they have a rapier, and you know, I saw that they have like repost or repost. I'm sorry, however you pronounce that French word. It's a French word. Um, where it's like a melee attack, but they also have like a ton of black and white magic. It's so cool. They can even res people, and it doesn't have the resurrection weakness. Like they have like a, a penalty free resurrection. That battle res. Battle Jack res. of all spades, master of none. Pretty much. Usually yeah. It's, it's cool mage. because it the, the, the every every Pretty class much, has a has a dynamic uh, mechanic, and like for the red mage, you need to get in and do melee. Well, getting in and do me- doing melee shortens the cooldowns on your casts yep. on your. Yep. So you're incentivized to go back and forth, back and forth. Every single job, Brandon, has its own unique system. It is 
flawlessly executed in my opinion i'm talking the samurai oh my god i love the samurai so samurai samurai's got uh and i'm just going to talk about the samurai i'm not going to get too in depth with everything because i'll be here forever uh samurai's got um it's got like a, i forgot the, the the katana gauge i forgot what it's called jacob chime in if you remember um, yeah, I think thinking. it's key. Is it key? Is I, I don't know if that sounds key. right. That sounds right. It's either key or chai. Okay. But then they also have uh, three little icons that your combos will trigger. I forgot what those are called too. I think, I, God, I wish I, I, I should have wrote this down. Uh, but essentially, so you build up your combos. Is it to do king, king, king key? Kinky. 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 That's it. Something like that. Um, Kinky. Kinky. Something, something like that. But, but the three icons. So, um, you do different combos. So like, I don't remember the names of all the abilities cause there's so many, but I'll, I'll kind of call out my, my action bars on my keyboard. So I'll do one, two, three, that pulls up, that pulls up Zen. I do one and five, that'll pull up another one, another one of the icons. And then I'll put one, six and seven, and that'll pull up all three. And then when I do all three of them, I can hit them with, with my finisher. Um, but I, there's like three different finishers that I could do. One of them is a DOT damage over time. One of them is an area of effect. And then one of them does an insane amount of damage. And then I built up that kinky meter. Um, and then I could use my, um, my buff from that kinky meter. Once I hit 20, I use that buff and I could use that, that, that finishing combo that does a ton of damage. Um, it's all Japanese words. So I, of course I can't remember it, but, um, and I hit them with that finisher. I could do like 3k damage. Like I, I just pummel it on them. It's so great. And, but you see the crazy thing is Brandon is that they're all unique like that. Every class, like the dark Knight has like a darkness meter that they build up with their darkness. Um, and then uh, a meter to show how much threat they're generating. The Dragoon has all kinds of jumps and they have a combo. They have a combo. Um, they have a combo system that works really well. Um, I haven't really played a whole lot like Black Mage. Black Mage has a burn phase and a, uh, a conserve phase where your your burn phase, you're doing, literally using fire magic, burning your MP. And when you need to conserve your MP, you're using ice magic. It's so flawlessly executed, dude. It's so perfect. Like the thing about WoW is that WoW, everything felt the same. You're basically pressing 111, That's the biggest thing about World of Warcraft and MMOs in general. Yep. That is a big turnoff to people like me and, and Seth. Uh, it's gameplay is important because it's what you're doing the entire time, right? Yep. Um, and it's just kind of boring whenever you're playing a certain class. Let's say I'm playing a rogue, and you know, like you said, I optimize that that fastest mix of moves, and in every encounter just turns into me doing the same thing over and over again, and it doesn't force me to get creative exactly. or use any of my other abilities. And, and Final Fantasy XIV does an excellent way to do all that. To it's kind of, it's situational. Like you kind of have to, you have to be very, very aware of everything that's going on. Like if you find yourself in a situation that requires a lot of mobility, you're gonna have to do different abilities. If you're if you're in a situation where you're gonna do, you're gonna stand still, you have to do certain abilities. If you find yourself in a situation where you're just swarmed with a bunch of bad guys, you gotta plow on your AOEs. Dude, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I'm enjoying this game. I'm probably clocking in maybe like... Oh, I know hurt. you're clocking in. I know I'm you're clocking in some hours. I mean, you, you, I, I, like, as Brandon and Jacob, you know, I mean, they'll be like, we're Steve. You want, we want them to play Smash. And somebody will snap me and play Smash. I might, like, check my phone, like, after five Seth hours. Has, Seth has had to resort to snap calling you now. Yeah, yeah. Seth has had to call me once to get me on Smash. I was like, oh, my bad, guys. I was just so sucked in. Uh, we, have to, you must, we have to say that, I'm sorry, I, have to, I do want to point. It's still an MMO. You're still doing those systems. You're still yeah. mashing keys. You're still mashing rotations. But what Final Fantasy, and it's just like what WoW did to EverQuest, Final Fantasy has done to World of Warcraft. Pretty much. They have streamlined things. It, it, when you hit uh, a, every like most classes have a combination so it's like all right i need to hit my opener and then it'll tell you hey this next button it'll highlight it so this is probably what you need to hit next because it's gonna do more damage because you're coming right. off of this first or one. it might have a special effect like have, uh, exactly yeah you might it might, like put, AOE a dot. It might or, put a dot or right. an AOE i gotta or tell you, you above. um i'm not trying to like poo poo on world of warcraft but <laughs> no, you dude, guys know you, you guys know me i'm i'm a final fantasy hardcore but like the armor sets i'm looking at look cooler 
Dude, it all oh. tickles my fancy 100%, like the weapon style, the character style. Now, the probably the, the thing that loses me a little bit in Final Fantasy XIV is the races. Now, I'm looking at some some of these newer ones, like the Hrothgar. This thing looks sick. Dude, the Hrothgar looks pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty They're pretty awesome. The, uh, Ad, they're adding uh, bunny dudes. <laughs> apparently, yeah, so that's that's something that's strange, is that the, is that that's the Viera, right? Yeah, the Viera was like uh, female only, um, so it's strange they're adding them in. But... Um, no, I'm looking here, Steve. They have more than just those outfits that you showed me. They have uh, Titus's outfit, yep. Snow's outfit from 13. Oh, um, and they have them all on this Hrothgar. They actually look kind of cool. This Hrothgar and Zidane's outfit actually looks kind of cool. And they, pretty cool. and they have they have transmog in this game too, in the form of armor. Yeah. So you can I take mean, those those that's, like that's phenomenal. The cloud set, the the strife set. Uh, I, I've got um. I've got the one. Who's the uh, the gunblade guy from uh, Squall? Squall. They, I have oh, his outfit you. on my. Side. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was a gunblade guy. But, but no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about. It. I know I'm making fun, but you you get this is your foot in the door to yeah. knowing about this stuff, and that's what makes me so. I, I talked about it earlier. It makes me so giddy that you guys are talking about fighting. You know, uh, I don't know, like Tonberry and Alvaro's yeah. and. and Cause I, I know exactly what you're stuff. talking about. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, finally, my friends are they're in the Final Fantasy verse. Well, you I've know? always been in Final Fantasy. Let's let's let me, Steve, I want that to be known. Yeah, yeah, Steve has. Steve has been. But um, to hear you choose this over WoW, though, yeah. is... Yep. It, it makes me happy. Like, not in, like, in a vindictive way. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know what I'm trying to say. No, uh, I understand. I mean, it's just... It, it it's a combination of the fact that Final Fantasy XIV is so good, and the fact that WoW is just just falling apart is just the only way that I can describe it. Um, it's it's that that's really triggered this intense interest in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I mean, it's really good, and honestly, um, if I had stuck with it sooner, if I had stuck with it um, as if I had stuck with it longer. A while back, when I first picked up Final Fantasy XIV, I might have stayed uh, and, and given up WoW then, because that's how much I'm enjoying it right now. Um, I just, I kind of got sucked back into WoW because of the nostalgia trip, and I'm interested in the story. But now, at this point, I figure I'm just going to catch the story on YouTube videos to follow the story. I mean, that that's way. fair. I mean, I remember you telling me, and now I know you get a little bit of the recency bias whenever you play a lot of the new expansions, but uh, you kind of fell off of Shadowlands hard, dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember you you were liking it. I mean, you gave it the benefit of the doubt. I mean, as right. you should, something that you trust to be the game that it always was. But I remember when you fell off of it, 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 it was it was it was it was it was sour, man. It was oh, a yeah. toxic breakup, Steve. Yep. Tell you what, though, this I, I, I'm sorry, I, I went away at one point. I don't know if you, you talked about this, but that that end of the of the the one to fifty grind that story told you it wraps up and explodes, doesn't it? Oh God, does it ever? I mean, it's it's pretty similar to the red. Uh, to, I don't want to say too much. I'm, I might spoil it, but no, um, I, you can say that. It's, it's close to the red wedding. It's and, uh, close to the red wedding in Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones I mean, it's yeah. got that red wedding vibe. It's one of those things like whoa, whoa, whoa! I mean, wait a it, po- it popped off, dude. <laughs> it popped off. <laughs> and it's crazy because they'll tell you like when you get done with that final quest, you see that last cutscene, like okay, hey, by the way. Uh, you might need 45 minutes of time. Yeah, so it told me. Grab it's... a coke and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it, it flat out says, it flat out says, like, uh, it, it, we highly recommend that you sit and watch the cutscene. All of the, a long line of cutscenes coming up. We highly recommend you sit and dedicate some time to watch all of them. So if you don't think you have time, don't watch them yet. You know, and so, like, I had to, um, I had to, like, close my door and, like, text Julie and be like, look, I'm watching this. Just, uh, chill out for a second. Um, are a lot nicer but you know but i you know it, 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 it's really like, interesting uh, the way that some of those cutscenes are it, it it really shows you just how much more effort they put into that storytelling than, yeah and like i'm not i'm not trying to, once again I, I, it's hard to not to compare but i mean some of those cutscenes in world of warcraft it's like in engine rendered yeah and it just shows its age you know very like, much and it's like sometimes whenever you have those cutscenes with the in-game models it, it just doesn't hit Oh, like yeah. some of these rendered cutscenes, and, and I mean, heck, some of these are in engine and Final exactly, Fantasy, and they just so real. It's just, it's just a much better looking game. Yeah, I mean, uh, have you guys seen the recent Garrosh uh, cutscene? I'm gonna have to show y'all. It was bad. Oh, he's back. <laughs> well, he's 
He makes it. I'd say he's a, he makes a cameo appearance. And honestly, I like the story. I, li- I like this part of the story. I thought that was really cool what they did for him. Uh, but it just the in is awful in engine rendering. I mean, they don't match the, the lips with the mouth, and it just it it's they just, just use the boats and stuff. Like yeah. Him. But I mean, in all honesty, though, that's my biggest complaint with World of Warcraft right now. It's just it seems like there's such a complete lack of effort. You know, I mean, it's just. Uh, can I get into it now, or? Uh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to say though before you did was, um, yeah. is it those? I'm not sure if they're special events, but like the Kefka battle and all that stuff in Final yeah. Fantasy 14. Yeah, man, that stuff. You need to see makes more me want to play so see bad. You don't understand how bad. Dude, it makes come me on, Brandon. Come on, Brandon. Join us. Look, you, you don't do have. This. You don't even have to Join try. Us. You don't even have to try because Join I would have been playing Final Fantasy 14. I mean, I did with Jacob for a while. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, and I, I preferred it over WoW even then. Look, man, I, I'll be honest with you. It is it is pretty easy. It's pretty easy to jump in and out of. Okay, so like if you don't want to, if you want to just throw fifteen dollars at it and cancel it immediately, you'll still have it for that month. And if you decide you want to keep going, it's it's easy to it's easy to do. Like that. Unfortunately, they don't have a way to just purchase one month outright. And I wish they did. Uh, but you just you subscribe, you cancel it. And then you have it for yeah, the month. At this point, if you ever want to try the, it, uh, the, the the time and the uh, the timing of the of said time. Yeah, um, and I understand, and, and that's a good point. Uh, but just it's 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 not as much of a time commitment as you think. I'll say that much. But you uh, know, I, I I understand that and I respect that. Though. One one last question: uh, Does it, it at least to me it seems like that this game gets a little bit more um, gets updated a little bit more frequently? Than oh yeah, it does. Yeah. So it doesn't get stagnant as much. Yeah. But anyway, I, uh, I agree with that. Take it away. There's Steve. a lot to do each. Uh, week. Jacob, how are you looking over there? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm okay right now. I I've tucked myself away in the back of my uh, oh, okay. <laughs> karate school. The boys are here, and <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I've got my finger on the mute button. So if I need to duck, I'll tell you guys. Uh, but I, Steve, Steve, go ahead and, and and cover what you need to cover real quick. Yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take up the entire segment. Like I don't want this episode to be all about wow. But I mean, it's just it's just such a disgusting fall from grace yeah, just well, not not kind of a big thing not even just talking about the the uh the game itself but the company is just such an awful company i mean you know they've got the news about the lawsuit i mean that that that's just infuriating to say the least i mean it's just not only are they just getting so unbelievably lazy with their game my dog <laughs> no you're fine my, my dog was barking earlier too not only are they getting so lazy with their game but they are just a terrible company hiding all that disgusting harassment and just that 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 discrimination it's just you know i've really lost all respect for Blizzard uh, you see the, past that, the latest in that story by the way is yeah that uh, they're hiring a union busting law firm sounds about right to uh sounds prevent, about right to prevent the employees from unionizing sounds about right now That's, i'm not trying to like you we, we don't get into real world stuff yeah I'm, with this. I'm, we try to keep it video game related but uh this this unfortunately bleeds in the real world in a serious yeah. way with you know uh corporate america capitalism, exactly yada, 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 but. look i'm gonna stay away from the the hot button story because that's not why i quit i'm just saying that's just that's why but i probably won't go back it, it the stuff that's happening now it's, yeah. it's always easy been to there. piece together that this is because of that like exactly the lack of effort on their games the um you know the long wait times for these expansions that come out and then they're just like not that good you know overwatch it didn't have to be world World of warcraft overwatch exactly same events every year we're waiting on overwatch 2 they it's taking forever to come out like it's they make great products but once they're out it's like the support on them it's it's like a, a dice roll Exactly. Let me, let, let, let me, I'm gonna put this into perspective for you, Brandon. I'll, I'm gonna show you how far that they've truly fallen. Okay. Um, the other day, I, one of the things I like to do is I like to follow everybody on Twitch. I, I follow a bunch of people. I follow guys like Asmongold, uh, Kaif, um, Mad Season Show, Big uh, Timers. Yeah, yeah. Snacky Box. You know, big, a lot big, of big name people who are known for World of Warcraft. Brandon, every single person that I just named was on Final Fantasy 14, except Mad Season Show. I'm not sure if he's on there. But there was a time where I had all of the people that I followed for World of Warcraft 
was playing Final Fantasy XIV. It's that's wild. I mean, it, it almost would have happened. Even I mean, now a lot of people are doing it in protest. Exactly. Uh, but even before, before that, even but, before but, that, but this was about, happening uh, before this too. Yeah, we talked about how Final Fantasy XIV's numbers were higher. Like they took the number one spot for concurrent yep. players. Yep. Let me tell you something. Asmongold started playing Final Fantasy XIV on July third. And every single stream that he has is Final Fantasy XIV progression. He has not, he is not, he hasn't touched WoW in a week, but he has not put WoW on his stream since July 3rd. This, this blows my mind as a Final Fantasy fan. The fact that this is getting as much attention, uh, and, and because it's a good product, not just because yeah. it's, it's, it just so happens to be the other MMO, um, it because of the weird, yeah, in between. Final Fantasy 12 and even now with 16 kind of wherever it, it is yeah. in development limbo you know 15 had its problems but ever since 12 I'm not going to count 11 because um, that was MMO yeah. 12 was kind of like the last good one for most people Yeah, and even before that for me it was Final Fantasy 10 because 11 was the MMO 12 was the last one for most people and then 13 came out and uh, mm -hmm. That is a divisive game amongst the Final Fantasy fan base. I'm, I'm in the, I'm kind of like in the middle of that one. I don't, yeah. I, I, I hate it, but I don't not recommend it to people. Um, it has great music and it has great Final Fantasy elements, but as a game, I don't enjoy it. Was it was okay. But the fact that they they stuck on it for so long, Final Fantasy 13, 13 2, 13 3, Return of mm -hmm. Lightning, all that crap. Uh, and then 14 came out. Uh, and then this is before this is pre Realm Reborn, and it it didn't do well. And then 15 had its problems. So Final Fantasy as a franchise was stuck in this weird limbo. Yeah. And to see this game come from the ashes like a like uh, the yeah, great uh, summon that's phoenix. I want. That's like what phoenix. I want to talk about. Like the it, phoenix. There's a the reason it's called Realm Reborn. It yeah. blows my mind that not only did it come from being so bad that they had to kill it, they pulled the plug on it to being dethroning the king it, exactly. it blows my mind there's an alternate know. universe where it's it final fantasy 14 is not online anymore <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah somewhere in the timeline we that we diverged and somewhere there's a universe where it died for good pretty much yeah but there's but, also a universe where final fantasy one didn't succeed and the final fantasy was not a fantasy at all yeah exactly that was deep that was a deep cut that was deep. if you don't <laughs> but, know final fantasy development history then you don't know what i'm talking about chaos i know exactly what you're talking about but <laughs> but to get back that. to get to get back to what, <laughs> what we're saying <laughs> i'm looking for chaos <laughs> but um, uh to get to get back to where i was uh so i've seen two prominent youtubers who are known for world of warcraft content creation who's very channel was started through final uh, through world of warcraft have quit wow and they just made videos of it and they've echoed the same complaints mad season show was more geared towards his issues with classic because he's a big classic player but preach preach gaming uh his issues were with the current state of wow and he they both echoed the same complaints that i've always had they are not listening to the player base and they refuse to listen to it i'm gonna tell you how bad it is guys i'm gonna tell you how bad it is so in ptr a public test realm they were testing 9.1 okay uh preach and a number of players and priest highlighted this in his why i'm quitting wow video they complained about a system that was not working it is broken it just doesn't work and people don't like it they kept it. They kept it in there. That is the pinnacle of what's going on with this game. And they're just, they are ignoring the blatant issues. You see, the problem is, is that the difference between, the major difference between the, the Final Fantasy XIV developers and World of Warcraft developers, Final Fantasy XIV sees what the people likes and they capitalize on it. They, you like this, we're going to do this. You don't like this, we're going to get rid of it. We are going to listen to you guys. We're going to do what you can, do what we can for you. Where Warcraft on the hand is like, yeah, you may not like it at first, but you're going to you're going to grow on it. You're going to grow on it and they haven't grown on it. And it's just this pompous attitude that just that just reflects everything that Blizzard has been doing and and it's such a shame. I mean, it's just, it's prevalent in everything in the news today with the lawsuit. It's just Blizzard's mentality. It's just, they are so 
conceited and so stubborn and so stuck in their ways that they think they know what we want. But the reality is, is that they don't know what we want. I mean, go back to when they, when people wanted vanilla, when they first had people ask vanilla, classic vanilla, World of Warcraft. They had the freaking president get up there and said, you think you know what you want, but you don't. No, the consumer knows what they want, oh, guys. No, dude, dude, you can go, go to almost every BlizzCon. And remember the uh, the Diablo moment? Do you guys not have phones? Is this an in-season April Fool's joke? There's right. the Diablo moment where they, they, they were like, hey, we're, we're corporate. We know, we, we think we know what's best for the company because everybody has a phone and we want to sell this game to everybody with a phone. Did that game ever come out? Was it any good? Does anyone know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, Did I, it even... I don't know. It's just fallen into obscurity. That's why. <laughs> if, is it, if it's even out, I don't even know. But but that's the thing, though. That that is that is the that and is the core the sad of part, the problem. The sad part is that because of the reputation that that they built, being this you know company that values diversity and transparency, and BlizzCon being one of the single biggest conventions for. A single developer yeah you know everyone knows what blizzcon is oh yeah you know? uh and then to see them like this is weird man this is so weird like you you, you would travel back like 10 15 years ago you tell me we're about really this. in the I, upside I down right you. now yeah we're, we, we right. really are in the upside uh, down we're in the mirror, mirror the now, mirror reality without without delving too much into the real world stuff um comparing world of warcraft or, or blizzard and, and square you know one thing to remember is that Blizzard is an American company um, mm -hmm. and Square is a Japanese company. And to see exactly. the different the difference in the culture as far as how they treat their consumers is something that might be telling not only yep. uh, from a gaming standpoint, but from that real real world standpoint that we typically don't like yep. to get into on this show. <laughs> yep. See, Final Fantasy Square and Final Fantasy are more worried about putting on a, like they like okay the the goal of any business whether it be video gaming restaurant or anything like that is to create uh to create uh what's the word I'm looking for um loyalty you want loyalty or maybe not so much loyalty but but people consistently coming back to your product okay Square and Final Fantasy say we want a good product out a good product is going to attract and keep gamers here. A fantastic product. A fantastic product is going to keep people here. Blizzard, Blizzard, on the other hand, <laughs> is more focused on trapping people into the system. So they sit here and they'll put out these really cool looking mounts like, oh, check out this flying pirate ship that you could get or this uh, really cool and looking dragon. And it costs dragon. $45. Not even, Brandon. It costs six months subscription. <laughs> cost a six like those transmog sets like that yep. don't even look that good yep that's how that is how that you know don't talk about the one talk about the wings yep <laughs> like who wants that oh, but that's man. the thing they're moving away from creating a product that will get people to stay and they're focusing more on how they could trap people into their system because you see the, if you notice and preach pointed this out in this video and so did mad season show what they're doing is they're putting these fancy mounts that you could get with a six month subscription. They got rid of the ability to buy to buy uh, game time months at a time without a subscription. You, you can only get up to two months without a subscription. You can't do the one month without a subscription anymore. They quietly shoveled that because they don't want people to do that. They're trying to bring the WoW token to Burning Crusade Classic. They're trying to bring the wow, the wow token. Do you know how that's going to skull F the economy? <laughs> the economy of classic wow is so... The reason why the economy is so bloated in, in retail is because of that wow token. I'm not opposed to the wow token because I think it gives people the ability to play the game without having to spend their money. But somebody's got to spend that money somewhere else. But if you bring that to classic WoW, it is going to destroy that economy. It is going to wreck it. It is going to absolutely, completely, and totally annihilate it, okay? And then with retail, what they're doing is they're doing that six months crap, okay? And if you notice, all of their big content comes out in a, in, in a six month period because they want to incentivize people to resubscribe in that time. So what they do is they'll put out this fancy little six month pack with this fancy little mount and people are going to buy it because people are like, I want the mount. Give me the mount. 
And so people are stuck there with six months. They made their money. They made six months worth of money off of you already. So it doesn't matter if you unsubscribe. Man, you already paid for it. It's just so nasty. I mean, and it's so disgusting, Brandon. <laughs> so this is this is if we if we if we kind of zoom out a little bit and just look at Blizzard as a whole, it kind of has got me worried, especially with the stuff, the real life stuff's going on, because there's some beloved IPs. Now I get it; these different IPs are worked on by different teams. But if we're talking about Activision slash Blizzard as a whole, like Diablo, now that's Diablo Resurrected is coming out, I think next month or the month after next, and it's probably already done. But like Diablo Four, uh, like you mentioned earlier, Brandon, with Overwatch Two, like. Where's the future for What's these going games? On with it? Right, because this, this scares me not knowing these things. Then where? Well, these... that and then the fact that people might not want to buy these games. Right. But in protest, you know, and and that's that's fair. It is fair. That's that's fair. That's called voting with your dollar and yep. not supporting someone. Exactly. That's why I'm not going to go back. I'm telling you, like. I grew I up with Diablo 2, and I was, I think, the most stoked out of all of us just because of my nostalgia for, for, for Resurrected. And yeah, like I told you, it's coming out the next month or so. And I, I might I have did. to just, I, I, my high, I might have <laughs> to hold off, man. I, I, I'm the same way with you. I, and, and, it, and it sucks because yeah. these are IPs that people love, yep. but the things that they are doing outweigh that, or at least I was, hopefully it should. Jacob, I was going to get, I was going to get Diablo 2, and I was going to get Overwatch 2, but now i'm not so sure i i really don't i really don't know i mean i i i started to get really fed up with them about world of warcraft and the fact that they just want to squeeze out every dollar from you and keep you keep you sucked in with these stupid time gates with this crap that you have to wait every week to to to, to complete a new part of the story like every tuesday yeah like 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 right now for example okay uh 9.1 launched back on July, at the beginning of July. You have to progress in the story every week. You get to a point where it's like you you must reach level such and such to uh, renown to go on to the story. You're capped on renown. You can only go up to a certain amount of renown per week. So you have to get to renown level 44 to move on to the second part of the chapter, but you're capped at 42. Like, what is this? this what? Why? Why am I prevented from playing your game? Uh, so I do want to say um, real quick, let me weasel this in. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the reason that I we typically don't like, you know, it's kind of my choice, I guess, but yeah. I try not to bring in a lot of this like real world stuff uh, with these gaming stories because that's kind of the point. It defeats the point of what the show's supposed to be. Uh, so if like this is your first time listening, just just know that. The reason that we, we don't want to talk about it is because this show is like kind of like our getaway from all that is horrible in the world anyway. And unfortunately, sometimes that bleeds into our hobby. And yeah. un even more unfortunately, is it seems like it's bleeding into our hobby more now than it ever yeah. has before uh for reasons that might be for the better or for worse um yeah. so i just wanted to point that out real quick there's a reason we're kind of like tiptoeing around eggshells as far as mentioning exactly what's no, happening I think if this was if this was my job well yeah. if, if i was giant bomb or if i was ign or whoever there would be a reason to talk about this and, yeah and, and bring it to everyone's um attention but if you're listening to this and you probably already know about what's going on with that my my big reason why I'm kind of tiptoeing around it is because I don't know what it's like to be a victim like that. And I feel like if I speak True. on it, if I speak on it, I'm not giving a full picture. Like it's so easy Agreed. for me. I, I like like it's easy for me to be an armchair advocate. But what what we need to do as as human beings is we need to listen to the actual victims and let them talk about it and they'd be outraged based on them. Because you see, like I could stir the pot, I could get people upset, but people are not going to know the full story, the full picture. Like I'm only saying what I see on the news. And so like I don't want to talk about it. Because <coughs> I don't want to assume the role of speaking for the victims. The victims need to be heard themselves. And I feel like right. you know. And, and so like what I would do instead of instead of talk about it is i would i would tell people go look at what the victims are saying go look at what people's recollections yeah, are and go also we're we're technically we're, we're we're not professionals this is yeah, exactly. this isn't we're my not. job this isn't our job i would like it to be if you yeah, want to help out the you know, please support. but but this Pretty is much. this is the point like this this is one of the great things about this show is that you're getting the perspective from a fellow consumer someone who this is what we like to do this is our hobby this is our fun 
it's not it's not our job to go play Fallout 76. We're not saying good things about it because Bethesda paid us to. We legitimately feel these ways about the games that we play, and then exactly. about the, unfortunately, in this particular scenario, about the companies that make these games. Exactly. Um, and we've talked about it before. We talk, we've, we've, we've poo-pooed on Bethesda before. Yeah, we've yeah. poo-pooed on everybody. Everybody, poo- Everybody's fair we, game yeah, here, we, boys. No one is safe from the poo-pooing on this show. Yeah, <laughs> but, exactly. But no one Sometimes is safe gotta... from also being praised. Everyone has the, the chance. Oh, no, you guys, you guys don't have anything negative to say about Final Fantasy VII. I'm just saying. Oh, Wait, I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, 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 I've, actually, I've actually said some, whenever we talked no, about you, Final Fantasy yeah, I, I, I did talk about things that I can see. Sure. I, I, sure. I can not turn a blind eye to, but I can still enjoy it the way that I do. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to point that out real quick. Yeah. No, I think it's well said and, on both parts. And, and that's really well said. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, I want to I, I want to have an opinion of it and I want to talk about it, but I feel like as a as somebody who's not a victim, I don't I wouldn't be able to accurately portray it. Other That's well than said. The fact that I'm very Steve. very very upset and angry about it, and as somebody who is gonna be welcoming a daughter into this world, oh, side quest. Um, uh, as somebody who's gonna be welcoming a daughter into this world, that's not the type. Of, I don't want to see this in my world, and I right. definitely want to see this in my right. games. Um, yeah, there you go. But for it, the sake of time, it changes your perspective is uh, gonna change sir uh, for, for, it for the sake has, of time um, Jacob, did done. you have I'm any done. Did you, I don't have anything else did you have any other news uh, hit lists there's uh, a steam well, deck there's a switch OLED, <laughs> OLED uh, Super Mario 64 sold for 1.6 million in a perfect mint condition and that's about it okay so real quick switch OLED um, mm. A lot of people are upset about it because it's not uh, a 4K not output. Um, it's not the Switch Pro that everybody wanted. Everybody you know, got their expectations um, up. Yeah, that, as usual. I I think That's that the Nintendo, Nintendo fan base for Nintendo you. Nintendo looked at it and said, "Look, this is how, what it's going to cost to get well, these parts that are not there, and it, and we don't want to be the like a a PlayStation, or even though they've done it before with their products." Well, uh, the thing about it is that Nintendo never said that they were doing any of that. Exactly. This is very true. Exactly, it's just Nintendo this fan base did what it always does and, and just started speculating and just got excited and was like, "Oh my God, look how cool this is! This is going to be really cool. Look at the new Nintendo honestly, Switch." Honestly, I mean, like, it's not the product for me. But you know, if my if my switch broke today, I'd probably go pick up that one. Sure. Um, Steam Deck looks interesting. Little high deck. barrier. Um, let me. That pull would be up good for you, quick. Jacob, to to be able to play some of those games with us. Yeah, it would be. But the problem is to have a decent one with like the five twelve. Okay, yeah. Let me. Um, what, we're looking at like what upwards of. Hang on, I, I don't know how that pulled up. I, I need to. Um, Almost six hundred dollars. If yeah, not, if that. And if that's the case, if that's the case, then I'm I'm just gonna get a PC. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find the different this models. Is all, yes, give me, this give me is one in, second. No, I've got yeah. it pulled up. There's a, this is in, okay, there's the money. The 399 uh, uh, version for the 64 gigabyte version is $399. That's the, not even worth so getting. 399 for uh, 64 gigs 64 of storage. gigs of storage. Now yes. it has, it has the ability to add external storage sure, to it. It does. But um, it's going to work like a computer and you're going to have to load it off of that external. The external, yeah, right. Not, not the, it's, it's not like, SSD? it's not like, you know, it SSD. yeah, it's not like you're adding like the, the it to a, to a desktop. Not, it's flash memory. Sorry. The, um, the, the uh, 256 gigabyte version is $529 and the uh, 512 gig is going to be 649 Man. So you jump it up $150 each time mm-hmm. just to power. Yeah. And we don't have it in our hands yet. Like it, and, I, that and D-pad the, on the left um, of this, the, it just looks a little weird. The, the new one, um, the new one, not the new one, the more expensive model comes with like the better screen, like the yeah. scratchless yeah, screen yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking at it ergonomically, now I don't have it in my hands, so I can't say anything, but those face buttons look like they're right there on the edge. Right by just, the just, yeah. Yeah. just slipping off of it. It doesn't look, now, I, I didn't think that I, the Joy Cons would be as comfortable as they were, so I could sure. be wrong. I mean, yeah, um, sure, but, but these aren't. I mean, these I don't know either, though. I don't are know they? who this product is for. Um, like, it's, yeah, it's it's mobile PC gaming. That's basically but, it. But with a two to eight two to eight hour battery life, how? Yeah. Long? <laughs> That two sucks. hours more closer to the two for your higher graphical fidelity, more demanding. Yeah, can you games. imagine trying to play control on that? So like, <laughs> might get thirty might minutes. Eternal. But like, might get thirty minutes. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not trying to just poo poo on it. But like, um, what game? I mean, are you gonna? 
every time I ever played Red Dead Redemption 2 story mode, I played for more than two hours. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, well, and like, I played what... from the comfort of my my office chair in in my house, not in the sunlight. You know? Yeah. I'm glad that they're approaching this. Look, I'm I'm, I'm uh, hey, neat. Steam, it's go cool. for it. I'm think it's I think it's a good idea. It's a start. I, I it's a start to a uh, uh, to a, a a market that's open. But the thing is, nobody plays these kind of games on the Switch. The the thing that people are playing the Switch for is Nintendo's games or the or, indie. Yeah, you know what's, you know what's cool. You know, what? I'm I'm riding in the back. Steve Steve's driving me to uh, the pizza shop. I'm sitting in the back. I'm playing Moonlighter on my Switch, and I can put that game. I can I can turn it on, fire up, put it away in a moment's notice. Correct. Yeah. You know, I so. can't I can't. And at least as as the kind of gamer I am, I can't just pause Doom 2016 in the middle of a firefight and pick yeah. it right back up and keep playing. Right. Same way I can some of these Switch games, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. I, we, we, we'll see. I, I think there's a market for it. I think people are going to buy these up. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to so, play Valheim anywhere, anytime. Sure. People's, people's arguments about it in favor of it is just that, like, uh, you can emulate on it. And that's pretty cool, mm-hmm. I guess. But I mean, like, if I got a switch, why would I need to emulate it? You know, yeah. again, six hundred and forty nine dollars. That and it's also decent, illegal. <laughs> six hundred and forty nine dollars will get you a decent laptop. Six hundred forty. Exactly. Yeah, six hundred forty nine dollars is going to get you any of the the new consoles if they were. You know, if you could walk into a store and buy them, you could six hundred forty nine dollars is going to get you the full console and probably. I'm seeing game. Xbox is in the wild now. Uh, Xbox uh, Series S is only like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to talk about entry level stuff? That's the point of the Series S. Yeah, like, exactly. Right. That I don't know. Um, I think it, it looks like, as other than the ergonomic concerns, it looks like a good product. Sure. Uh, I'm sure it's well made, but I don't know. When I see when I see Valve making stuff like this, uh, I just think about the Valve controllers. I think about yeah, the Steam boxes. That's what I was about to and I think say. about these weird projects that they had. Offshoots. I felt like they just made them and they just let them go. Mm-hmm. Like agreed. I, I know they're making waves um, in the in the the news feeds and that's the point but like how are they is this something that's going to have support like are they going to yep. support this thing for the downs it's something that they want to compete with other things i don't know it's it's just it's weird it's just weird like google i don't stadia. know who their market is kind of product <laughs> um, google stadia oh uh, is that is that still around they're still uh, trying no. they're trying it's still amazon's there. trying to do that too oh man I've and heard Netflix, uh, I've Netflix. heard that new 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 world game from Amazon has actually Netflix been, is talking about getting into video games more don't than just do like, it. Um, don't do it Am- uh, Netflix don't do it please don't do but, it uh, I know we're running along we'll, we'll we'll touch base on some more news stories some other yeah that, I think that's good yeah. enough for today um but yeah, that's good just get back into this let me read this trivia card before I totally forget about it <laughs> yeah I want to know who Bruce Willis played oh so I knew this one it was a PS1 game uh, actor Bruce Willis provided his likeness and voice for which 1998 game the answer is Apocalypse Apocalypse oh, I've heard of and this game question number two I played a demo question number two what is the name of the DJ in Burnout Paradise if you Three said <laughs> if you said DJ Atomica you'd be right all right. DJ sure. Atomica, he, he's cool because he's like the narrator of the game. Okay. Like he's like, hey, everyone, we got some people racing down at the beach. and like, it was Oh, you, you know? okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, Burnout it. Paradise is a really great game. It is a good and game. And it's, it's, it's not the traditional Burnout game, but, man, I rebought it on PS4. That is an incredible game. It's yeah. only like you can find it on sale for like 10 bucks. Yeah, it's very cheap now. That is a good game, and you can play with friends. Uh, I, highly, I highly recommend. Apocalypse on PS1, not so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for listening to the show and you know what uh i really appreciate you listening especially if you listen all the way to the show and you can support this show uh non-monetarily by uh sharing with your friends you know yeah. uh share share with your neighbor share with your pet share with your children this is a somewhat family friendly show the more people you share uh this show with uh the better it is for us because we get those views and uh, it makes me feel better about myself. So thanks so much. <laughs> My name's Brandon. <laughs> I'm Jacob. And I'm Steve. And we'll see you next time. And I'm going to try to tab out of this and end this recording out. correctly. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>